Hello again, everyone, uh, and I hope you agree with me that in our study of uh, Search for a Nonviolent Future, uh, I feel that we're really getting in down right now into the heart of nonviolence, and uh, it's a, a very useful thing. Uh, I want to emphasize that often practitioners say that the peak experience, as I've been referring to it, the feeling of transcending your individual um, concerns and having a role to play, meaningful role in fixing things, changing society for the better, that that feeling actually is addictive. Uh, Solange Muller, who was a daughter of the Under Secretary General of the UN at that time, back in the 70s, uh, was, as a very young woman, found herself in charge of a refugee camp in Central America where there were 10,000 refugees. Incredible uh, responsibility to dump on a 21-year-old girl. But she said later on, when you find work like that, you never go back. People think, oh, what a terrible experience. But once you rise to that challenge, you can't go back to just an ordinary, you know, work for money employment. Uh, so uh, later on, of course, we will be discussing how this addictive can actually be true and that you can, uh, if this might be a simple way of overcoming the tremendous problem of uh, substance abuse and drug addiction that we're having uh, in our country primarily. Uh, it shows that people need that kind of uh, intensity, that kind of drive, and they're getting it in destructive ways, but they could get it just as uh, powerfully and in a more long-lasting way from constructive work of the kind that nonviolence uh, is famous for. But uh, we want to move on now beyond the peak experience because uh, practitioners and scholars have noticed that you can often create what's called today the effervescence of the crowd. You can get tens, you can get hundreds of thousands of people. In the Philippines, they got two million people out in the street. Uh, there were something like 12 million people worldwide who came out into the streets of various capitals to forestall the Iraq war. Uh, it didn't work. A lot of these movements don't work if they don't go beyond that effervescence. And uh, in fact, one of the definitions of principled nonviolence happens is not one that completely works for me, but it's pretty common. It is that this nonviolent principled nonviolence as opposed to just being a strategy is a way of life. So what we're starting to go into now is how do you turn this uh, momentary uprising of person power into a way of life? Uh, I, before quite stepping into that, I wanted to share with you a quote that I recently came across by a spiritual figure, Swami Vivekananda, who was constantly told in the early part of the 20th century that he's asking people to suppress their individuality. He got quite, well, contemptuous at one point, and he said, you people haven't found your individuality yet. How are you going to repress it? So bear that in mind as we talk about the kind of training that builds out to a, a way of life. And we'll be discussing how that is done very shortly.